Paul Hawkins is our guest. We've been studying a, actually taking the last number of programs, talking about the ways of God in various things. And on today's program, we're talking about the way of God in regard to the fear of the Lord. Stay with us on It's You Day. Thank you for joining us on It's New Day. I hope you're having a great summer, that God is speaking to you and yet your families are going together in unity and love and forgiveness. All the things that we're praying for, we're fighting with for your family and with you. Mm -hmm. And we're fighting for our family. We've had a great family time. But we one have. of the things you're wanting to talk about is keeping on asking and yeah, I, well, Betty, you know, God has ways of drawing us to Himself. I, I, this is one of the things, I, there's a that passage in Matthew chapter 7, which I, I love this passage. I've referred to it again and again at different times in my life, and, and it's important to me. But Jesus, in speaking to the people, says, you know, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And it's amazing how, in, as I'm growing in the Lord, as I'm maturing, my, my viewpoint of this verse changes. The, the object of it changes, and, and, I, and I realize it's a work of God in me. This is not me doing it, it's, you know, God slowly maturing. You say, okay, well, you're not a kid anymore, grow up. I'm getting old enough to be growing up. But anyway, uh, in the area of seek and you shall find, uh, I've talked about this before, but I, as, as I've been contemplating on this, God somehow, uh, the Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Okay, so somehow God says, look for me. I want you to Look for me. There's, there's Paul, uh, the, King David at one time, or David when he's writing in the Psalms says, you know, Lord, I was looking for you and I couldn't find you. You know, like, you know, where are you, God? You'll find that throughout mm -hmm. Scripture. There are the times when Simba says, God, where are you? I, I need you. Uh, Job is saying, when in the midst of his, his, you know, his illness and his pain and, and the loss of things, God, I, I, I've been faithful, where are you? I mean, And it's people a, it's may be asking call. that question today. Well, they might be right there today it, now. Abs, where, where are, where are you, are God? You? Yeah. Uh, something, and, and usually it's when bad things happen yes. in our lives. When, when somehow we can't see our way through the circumstances, when something very tragic comes along. I mean, you know, uh, death and, and loss. And we're saying, God, where were you, God? Mm -hmm. Where are you in the midst of this? Yes. You know, and, and so, so th it's a very real thing to say, seek. Mm -hmm. Okay, God is saying, okay, you, you can't see me in this. Seek for me. Look for me. You're going to discover something about me. You're going to find me in an, an often in, its, in a way that you don't expect. And this is a part that, that you see, God, God isn't hiding, but he wants us to discover more about him. He really is. And today, as we're do going through a whole yeah. series with Paul Hawkins, I really believe that that is really the premise of these programs. We, we yeah. are repeating programs because they are so meaningful in our walk with God and Absolutely. our journey in Absolutely. seeking Him. Yeah. So I believe that today, as you're saying, where are you, God? And you go through, watch the program. Don't miss any part of it or this series. We're just in the middle of the series. If you miss some, go back and get some or order them from us because they are all extremely mm -hmm. important They're, in our seeking in, God. In, in discovering God. Mm -hmm. It's about, dis it's God desires to be discovered. Yes. I mean, everything in Him wants you to know Him. That's His desire. A parent wants his child to discover more about the parent. God wants to discover more about him. He really does. He does. So, so you enjoy the, you know, open your heart up and say, God, I want to discover you during this series of programs. Stay with us. Paul Hawkins is our guest. He's with us from Colorado Springs. Uh, Paul has been a, a friend of ours. I, it's got to be just about 10 years now. Or Somewhere around Eight there. or 10 years yeah. since we first met. That's right. Uh, our children went to Youth with a Mission. They went to a Crossroads or a DTS program. Uh, back in the early 90s, you were their teacher, they, uh, and you know what? They came back and talked about it, and I'm so glad the Lord allowed us to connect. This is, this is so neat. <clears throat> it's my privilege. I love being with you, with you all. Well, well, well thank you, Paul. You, you, the, the character of God, the nature of God, the ways of God are really very central to your, to your heart. I mean, that's really well, important. you know what? You know what this, the title of this book is? Well, it says Holy Bible. Holy yeah. Spirit you know what Bible, Bible means? Book. Okay, a, Bible but a book, means book. Should, but okay. a book should be titled so that we have an idea what's in it. So this should say, to know God and make him known. 
<laughs> so they, there, there ought to be a different title on that. Yeah, book. I want to get mine embossed that says to know God on it, because that's really what the but, message is. But you know, do you know that's true? I mean, <clears throat> it, it's, it is true. That's right. Thank you. What did, what did Jesus say in John 17, verse 3? That this is eternal life, that they might know him. Know, know thee, him. the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And it's repeated in 1 John as well in chapter 5. So when you tell somebody, Jesus wants to give you eternal life, what you're really saying is, you can know God. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you know what? I think sometimes we, you know, we use a little term, which is maybe the beginning of something yeah. or, or a little part of something. Right. And the issue is, I, 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 as a matter of fact, I was spending time in the book of Colossians, just spending time this month. Just, it's been kind of the, my book of focus this month. And, and it's all about saying the mystery is, Christ, is, is Jesus. I mean, mm -hmm. who, through whom you can know the Father. I mean, that's what it's all about. What does it say? In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Colossians. But Isaiah says the fear of the Lord is the key to his treasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are keys and there are ways. And we've been focusing the, the, this week this, yeah. uh, on the programs about the ways of God. Do you know, Willard, one of the things that, that we Christians really need to get into our thick heads is that the ways of God are always right. Remember Hosea 14.9? Uh, we talked yesterday about some areas, and it's not just that we learn to seek God to maintain unity and relationship in our family, in our church or ministry life, but in every area of our life. So a businessman can do the same. A doctor can do the same in every category of our lives because the ways of God are always right. And, and if we're not focusing on knowing God, which means we want to know His ways, like Moses said, teach mm -hmm. me thy ways that I might know thee, yeah. we're going to miss it. I was reading this morning. My daily reading was Psalm 67. Let me read. It's okay. real short. Okay. God be merciful to us and bless us and cause His face to shine upon us. See law. Or stop and think about it. For what purpose? That your way may be known on earth your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the earth, then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear the Lord did a little study, and I found, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in the Old Testament where fearing the Lord and the ways of God are in the same sentence. Okay. In okay. other words, here, here's one, Isaiah 63, 7, O Lord, why hast thou not made us to err? Why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake, the, tri the tribes of thine inheritance. This is the negative part of it. Right. Psalm right. 25, 12. What man is he that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should choose. Psalm 128, verse 1. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord that walks in his ways. So when we talk about the fear of That's the good. Lord, it's directly related to the ways of God. Uh, you remember in Deuteronomy many times, and specifically chapter 8, verse 5, where it talks about uh, keeping the commandments of the Lord to walk in His ways and to fear Him. Mm -hmm. So we see a direct link in the Scriptures between mm -hmm. the ways of God and, and the fear, fear the of the Lord. Now, do, do you remember what the biblical definitions for the fear of the Lord are? No. <laughs> okay, well, Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, evil. pride, arrogance, and the evil way. Okay. That's a hate sin. Right. Or Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. Proverbs 1.8, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And Proverbs 15.33, the fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom. See, the fear of the Lord is not only the hatred of sin, but it's the wisdom right. and right. how to avoid the very right. temptations of sin. It's how to get out of it. It's how to avoid it to start with. It's how to win. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, in our, in our living and walking. So today, you know, we've got this incredible access on the Internet, and I love it. But 
you've got millions of people who, because they're not in the fear of God today, are addicted to pornography on the internet. Um, I've, and I don't know about in Canada, but we have some very shocking statistics in the United States about the high percentage of American pastors who are addicted to pornography on the internet. Well, it's a, it's a difficult job being a pastor. It really is. And, and in the privacy of their office sometimes, they give in to the temptations and they seek a false comfort on something like that, and it becomes addictive. It's really an indication of a lack of the fear of the Lord in the church today. Brother Andrew, you remember God Smuggler, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he, typical witty Dutchman. I heard him speak many years ago, and he said, most people are too Christian to enjoy their sin, but there's too much sin in their lives to enjoy being a Christian. <laughs> 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 Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally related to that when I heard it. <laughs> okay. You see, when I first became a missionary with you, put the mission, I was 31 years old. I had a wife. I had a two-year-old son. We went to Copenhagen, Denmark to join you, put the mission, as part of a team of 50 to do evangelism before we went back to Switzerland to take our training. And uh, I was the old man on the team. I was 31. Oh, and the man. minute I got there, I was in a terrible quandary, Willard. Because porno, Cop uh, Copenhagen at that time was the pornography capital of the world. Now, I grew up in Southern California where there was porno. I mean, you know, but it was behind painted storeroom windows. And only the riffraff ever went in there. So, right, I mean, but you didn't see it on the street. No, it wasn't you didn't see it on the, the street. You it could get it, but it wasn't I mean, on the no, street. That's right. But when you got to Denmark, it was everywhere. It wasn't, didn't leave anything to the imagination. In fact, I had a student who told me that, there, that his mother, he was a Danish student, he said his mother looked at porno. Can you imagine your mother looking at porno? And he said, my brother has his entire bedroom walls, Plastic. wallpaper with pornographic pictures. This is how bad it was in Denmark when we went there. And that's back in the early 70s. That was in 1971. So here I was there to be a missionary, do evangelism, and what I find in my heart, an intense burning desire to go visit a porno shop. Now, the reasoning was, Paul, you need to be aware of what's going on in the world today. Sure. Well, I was smart enough to figure out that didn't come from heaven. <laughs> okay. But that didn't change the fact that I still wanted to go do it. <laughs> okay. you know? Good listen, That's very good. That's I was good. miserable. Okay. By the way, you know what it, you know it says... Uh, um, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, yes. Psalm 19. What do you think about when you have nothing to think about? That is the meditation of your heart. Okay, so when you're in neutral, yeah. so to speak. That, when you have nothing to think about, yeah. what do you think about? See, um, when wow. you first, if, when, if I was your friend when you first fell in love with, uh, Betty. with Betty, I came up and said, whacked you, hey, hey bud, don't forget you're in love. You go, oh yeah, I forgot. No, 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 no. You don't no. go around forgetting no. when you're in no, love. As, as a matter of fact, this morning, so I was, it's one of the things, well, here's one of the things that went, came into my mind this morning when it's probably out of gear or whatever. The, but the other day, one of the other earlier shows, you were talking about the fact that, you know, when we pray, it says, uh, uh, you know, you, you're saying, uh, you know, if I was talking to Betty and say, oh, Betty, by the way, thank you. on oh, Betty, Lord, yeah. you know, we kept yeah. using her name all, or using someone's name all the time. Sure. We pray that way. Yeah. And I thought, you know, but I remember when I first met Betty, I just loved the name Betty. And I would use the name Betty. Now, maybe not when she was around. I didn't say Betty this and Betty that. But, but it reminded me of that song. There's a song that West Side Story had called Maria. Yeah. Maria, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maria. You know, I thought, you know what? When you're really in love, you go that way. And I thought, you know what? There have been times in my life that I said, I just love the name. Jesus, Jesus, yeah, Jesus, that's right. Jesus. But anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, that's a total yeah. aside from where no, we're going No, the whole here. point is that, that when you're in love with somebody, you go to sleep thinking about him, you wake up thinking, thinking about him, you, you, you daydream you about him, you nightdream about him. You do. So what, where do we think about when we have nothing to think about, which tells us where our heart is, really, you see? Well, I was being consumed with this, this, with this, this burning this, this, in me to go visit a porno shop. Willard, I actually go, we used to go out on the streets to do evangelism with the secret desire that I might accidentally get an eyeful. 
I hear you. Because if I accidentally got an eyeful, then was I couldn't, okay. I wasn't be responsible, would I? No. Because <laughs> no. I didn't you, mean to you, do you it. Didn't mean <laughs> <laughs> Even though I really wanted I it. I know, I know. Isn't that, but we deceive ourselves thinking that. that now, yeah, this okay. is the fear, this is the lack of the fear of the Lord. Okay. The fear of the Lord is being, is being less concerned with what God thinks and more concerned with what you think. In other words, good when you fear point. God, That's a good point. when you fear God, you're more concerned with what God thinks and feels than what anybody else thinks and feels, including yourself. Not just what others think and feel, but, but it's what, God. It's, it's God. God. Not what you feel and think, what God thinks, but what, I mean, not what others think, but what God thinks. Good. And see, here I was consumed. I was not God-centered. I was self-centered. Right. And I got okay. so miserable. See, if you're not happy as a Christian, there's something wrong. If you're miserable, well, Andrew is probably right. There's too much sin in your life to enjoy being a yeah, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know? You're totally right. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be lukewarm. Get off the fence. Yeah. Get hot or get cold, because God says, otherwise I'm going to spit you out of my mouth anyway. So finally I said, God, help me. I am so miserable. He said, you want to know why? Of course, when God asks a question, you're already in trouble because he knows the answer. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. I, that's the reason I asked. Right. He said, well, there's no, you're consumed with lust. There's no fear of God in your life. Well, wow. You don't hate the sin of lust the way I do. That's your problem. Oh, my goodness. I said, what do I do? And he taught me three things. Number one, he said, every, get up before you ever go out of the house, and he votes ten times a day, stop at the door and say, Lord, I don't hate the sin of lust the way you do, but I want to. Whoa. Now, Whoa. ask and receive by faith for the fear of God to be upon my eyes, my thoughts, and my feet. And I receive it by faith. And then the third thing was to get into the scriptures and start to let him teach me the fear of the Lord. Because remember it says in Psalm 33, teach us the fear of the Lord. Yes. You've got to learn so, it. So it's not just saying, Lord, Show me. I mean, you know, put that in my heart. Right. You had, ex so number one was, you had to deny yourself those things. That's why, you know, your eyes, your, your, that That's kind of right. thing. You, and you had to say, you know, I don't want, I do yeah. want to see this the way you see it, Lord. Yeah. But then thirdly, I have to go and prepare myself, be willing to subject myself, open myself up to this. I have to find out what the Word says, so I make important to me what's important to Him. When you're in love with somebody, you hang on every word they right, say. Right. You make important to you what's yes. important to them. And God's words are important to him because there's life here. So I had to find out how he how sees he see the this? fear of the Lord. Now, I didn't go to a concordance. Now, if he tells you to do that, that's fine in this instance. But what I did was, as I'm having my daily reading, I would mark every time I came to a passage of Scripture that had the fear of God in it, I would mark it in blue. Every time I get a new Bible, I start all over again because I want, every time I open my Bible and I see blue anywhere, That's I want to go, bloop, bloop, fair God, oh, okay. boy, you need okay. it, Hawkins. You need it. You need it. You need it. Now that's good because, in other words, you're, it, this is about you. It's not about somebody else. It's no. not about other people's things. Yeah. This is about what I need This is to what help I in. need. I want to hate sin the way God does. Yes. I want to be wise as God is wise. So good. just to that's set your good. heart at ease and help Betty relax too. I never went to a porno shop. <laughs> I mean, Peggy's you, grateful too. You, I didn't because I got victory. It finally, I had, it was 10 times a day, I'd stop at the door and pray it. Finally got to the point that every morning in my quiet time only had to do it and it was fine for the whole day. So you could see progression happening yeah. and it was a wonderful thing. I was growing in an understanding yes. of the fear of the Lord. Yes. Well, then we moved from Copenhagen west into a village in Denmark where we we're going to start a training base for youth with a mission to train short-term missionaries. But in Denmark, it was everywhere, in every village. So even in the small places? Oh, yeah, everywhere. So I had, as a leader, I had to go to the airport and the train station to pick up guest speakers. And, and it's going to be there. It's going to be on the And when the you walls. walk in the front door, there's nothing left of the imagination. There's all the magazine racks, and there it all is, and there's the nudity, everything. I mean, Peggy wouldn't even go to a beauty shop and read a woman's magazine because you open up a woman's magazine, they're advertising toilet paper, and there's nude men and women advertising toilet paper. I mean, disgusting, but that's, what, that's how it was. You don't need to get people stirred up to buy toilet paper. I mean, for goodness sakes, you know? So I, I would walk in determined. I'm going to walk in victory. And I'd walk in like this. And one day God spoke to me and he said, look, there's a simpler solution. Uh, at the train station, instead of walking in the front door where you're confronted with the pornography, there's a path along the outside, left and side, and you can walk in the back door and avoid it. Oh, 
you know, why did I think of that before? So it wasn't just the hatred <laughs> of the sin, it's the wisdom and how to avoid the very temptations of That's the good. sin. That's good. That's good. And it's growing in the fear of the Lord. So it was confessing daily, I didn't have it. Ask, receive by faith. Now, why do we say daily? Because you'll fear God in the measure in which you want to fear God. You will hate sin in the measure in which you want to hate okay. sin. I remember one time hearing Joy Dawson speak. She said, you'll be as spiritual as you want to be. You'll fear God in the measure in which you... Well, oh, I didn't want to hear that. I wanted somebody to go ping with their magic yes, wand. Yeah, and yeah, and right. I'd be in the fear of God. I want someone to go ping and I'd be holy. But it doesn't work like that. There's, we have to make some so, decisions. So you've got to want to. That's right. And, and, and that want to has, yeah. is going to grow. Like, yeah. It's like everything else that's spirit. Like it, things grow. So unrighteousness will grow That's in your right. life, right. or righteousness will grow in your right. life. Which right. do you want to grow? In, in, in Proverbs chapter 1, it says, they did not choose the fear of the Lord. And there's that horrible word, choose. <laughs> but it says they didn't choose the fear of the Lord. And Deuteronomy says we've got to learn to fear the Lord. So you've got to run after it. So I, I, I started to go around the outside of the train station, I didn't, and sure. I was growing in strength. But one day, uh, a few years later, and I'm still was walking this out on a daily basis, and all the years I lived in Denmark, I never did go to a porno shop. And I, I uh, was in the Minneapolis, Minnesota airport, waiting for a flight to, to Philadelphia where I was going to speak. And I'm sitting, writing postcards home to my kids and my wife, and there's all kinds of empty chairs on both sides of me when this very old man, I'm left-handed, so I was turned like this. Yeah. This very old man next to me came and sat down right next to me, and I thought, well, of all the empty sh yeah, he, why did he why? sit so close, you know? Well, I thought I ought to be polite and say hello, so I turned around to say hello. When I did, I got full color, center full, right in the face. I mean, I turned back around mad in a hornet because this was innocent. I had no clue. Well, he slammed the magazine and walked off. I never said hello to him. He was there for 10 seconds. It was a total plant, you know? I felt sorry for the old guy looking at that stuff. But I tell you what, Willard, I had this picture indelibly imprinted upon my mind, and I saw everything through that picture. And I'm going to speak to a YWAM Discipleship Training yes. School. Yes. And I got this picture in my mind. So what do you do? It's Friday afternoon. I have to start speaking on Monday. So I fast all Friday night. I'm praying. I'm fasting all day Saturday, Saturday night, fasting all day Sunday, saying, God, you got to wash this thing away. And late Sunday afternoon, that picture washed away from my mind, and it's never been back. It's never been back. I won a victory. What a war. So a few years later, we're living in Hawaii, and I, we're up in, on the slopes of the volcano in a fern forest having a picnic. And the boys are off playing their, with their balls and stuff. So I took a walk through the forest, fern forest, and turned a corner, and here, I mean, this is a place that nobody ever, ever went to. Right out in the open, there is an open porno magazine on this pathway out in the middle of nowhere in this fern forest. And I knew what this is the devil. Well, I just kicked it off in the bushes so that the next person wouldn't everything see it. could consume it. The bugs can eat it up, you know, and no one would find it. <laughs> now, nobody but me and God would have ever known. But that's the point. God would have known. And when you fear him, you're more concerned with what he thinks and feels than even what you think and feel. We have to remember something wow. Tamara Winslow says, your feelings are real, but they're not always the truth. Right. So you don't got to give in to your feelings. You can make a decision. Now, we know Paul said this, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is, is weak. weak. Okay? That's where revelation on the fear of God comes in. Because, okay, that brings victory over a weak flesh. That's right. You see where we can uh, uh, may occupy our flesh in sanctification and honor. We can do it. We have that kind of ability with the grace of God being manifested to us. So when we come back, from the break, I'll talk to you about some of the blessings that come to us from in, being in the That's fear great. of the Lord. That's good. And nobody in his right mind would not want the fear of God. Because if you see the blessing. When you see right. all the blessings right. Absolutely. that are there. That's good. But you know, good, we'll take a break. Okay. I'll be right back right after this. Paul Hawkins, uh, that, we're talking to Paul Hawkins, by the way, folks, and I believe the Holy Spirit's talking to our hearts. We're talking about the fear of the Lord as a way, hey, this is one of the ways of God, getting to know the ways of God. I have a testimony, Willer, to add to that. Okay. Do you know, I, I won a victory as a young man. I battled and battled and battled. And you know what? 
since we've had the internet computer, I've never even been tempted once to go there to sneak a peek. There's possibility of victory. That's good. Yes. Uh, Acts 9:31 in the New American Standard Bible, it's, it talks about how the church at Jerusalem in Judea and Samaria went on coming to peace as it went in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Now put your name in there. Willard, you can come to peace as you go on in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You can continue to increase. Think about what a hope that is for young men and young women whose hormones are raging. They can come to peace yeah, and, and in the fear comfort. of the Lord yeah. and the comfort of the Holy Spirit and continue to increase. It's two sides of the coin. It's not just, I will do it, the fear of God. Mm -hmm. The other side of the coin is the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You see, whenever we, whenever we are, are lacking in the fear of God in our life and we give in to our, our feelings our senses. Yeah, and our, our senses, senses. Yeah. And, and move in, in fleshly lust. desires. It becomes a lust. lust. Okay. Or, or desire, yeah, whatever sure. that, whatever, whatever the, the, whatever the what, level of what, that is. Or whatever the object is, sure. not okay. just sexual no. always. Um, then um, what, what happens is that, that we get consumed with it and we start to distance ourselves from God. And if we'll make that decision, but it's really idolatry, isn't it? It is Why idolatry. is it idolatry? Because in Corinthians it says the Father is the Father of all comforts. And mm. when you go to anything else or anything else to get comfort instead of Him, it's idolatry. It's not letting him be who he is because he's the father of all comfort. So, so whatever you pursue to, 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 to satisfy that need for peace. Yeah, and comfort. And comfort, and yeah. the comfort. So, so it could be a car. Yeah. You could be as consumed by vehicles. Some people watch uh, hockey on the television. Some people read romance novels. Some people go to the refrigerator to get their comfort. It's not just sexual stuff. My pastor from many, many years ago, he's dead now, he was teach, preaching one Sunday, and he said, he, he, was, he said in his sermon, he was congratulating himself sitting at his desk one day because he'd gotten victory over sexual lust when he realized he was drinking two liters of chocolate milk and eating a dozen donuts. <laughs> All he did, and he realized he just transferred the lust from <laughs> sexual to food. Well, I'm sitting there going, what a stupid thing. I would never do that. I was smart enough to figure out what that was. And Willard, it wasn't even a week, and I found myself in front of a donut shop eating a half dozen donuts. I'd only gotten the, half, the first one half consumed when I realized, because I never ate donuts. I didn't do that kind of stuff. And I judged, and I ended up committing Doing the, the same sin. Thing, yeah. I did. It was, you know, what a lesson that was for me, you know. It's so the challenge to learn to go to the Lord and get your comfort, though. I mean, that's the, the, that's, that's yeah. the issue. That but, really... But see, that, that boils down to what you believe about God, doesn't it? See, if you, if, you, if you question God's goodness, if you doubt His love and His faithfulness to you, then you will, you will not believe that He will comfort you if you need it. Yeah. So you've got to do it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so yeah. it comes back to what we yes. believe about God. Yeah. And, and always does. I mean... It, it, we yeah. read in, in Proverbs 14, 2, it says, He who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord. So it's, if the fear of God is to do with righteousness, isn't it? Cornelius was described by the Holy Spirit as a person who, who feared God. It says he feared God, he prayed much, and gave many alms. Yes. Now the question is, is the fact he feared God related to his obedience in prayer and generosity? Because it says he feared God, prayed much, and gave many alms. Interesting thought. I, I, yeah, okay. The Holy Spirit described Job as a person who feared God three times in the book of Job in the first uh, yeah. two chapters. That's why he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He was more concerned with what God thought than what anybody else thought. Remember when, when God told Abraham to take Isaac up on the mountain and there's no indication of any resistance to, the, to obey Jesus at all, obey, obey God? And when Isaac says, as they're walking up the mountain, Father, where's the sacrifice? He says, the Lord will provide. He told the servant, wait here we'll, and we'll be back. We're going to go up and worship, we'll be back. That was a faith statement because he didn't know for sure. But he knew that he was able to raise him up if he did sacrifice him. You remember when and we got to the mountain and Abraham bound Isaac, put him on the altar, raised the knife, and God says, stop, Abraham, for now I know that you fear me. What God was saying to Abraham was, 
He was, you now, you're, you're more impressed with what I think and feel than what you think or feel, what Isaac thinks or feels, or what Sarah would, was going to think and feel if she knew what you were doing. See, this sets you free to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness when you're in the fear of God. It's the only way. Yeah. Do you remember when Joseph's brothers, before they knew who he was, he said to them, do this for I fear God. It's in Genesis someplace. Well, what was he saying to them? He was saying, you can trust my word because I'm a man of fear, wow. fears God. Wow. When I was about, I don't know, 16, 17, 18 somewhere, my parents had an elderly couple as friends who, uh, and Mrs., Mrs. Rudolph had cataract surgery in both eyes. They were both retired educators. My mother helped nurse her back to health. And this was in the, in the time when you had cataract surgery, you spent two weeks in bed. Right. Yeah. Recuperating. You couldn't move even. You That's know. right. And she was back on her feet. She had her very thick glasses before she got her contacts. And my father on a Saturday afternoon said, let's drop over and see how the Rudolphs are doing. So he and I drove over. It was about eight blocks from my home. And when we got there, my dad says, oh, rats, I forgot something. He said, you go on in, I'll be right back. I said, okay, so I knocked on the door. When I knocked on the door, Mrs. Rudolph said, oh, hello, Stephen, how are you? I thought, oh dear, what am I gonna do? She said, it's, it's Paul, it's not Stephen, whoever Stephen was. Well, I don't want to embarrass her by saying, oh, no, Mrs. Rudolph, this is Paul, can't you see? I don't want to embarrass her. So I thought, at some point I'll say something and she'll recognize it's Paul and see her mistake. But so I didn't say anything. We walked <coughs> into the living room. We sat down, there was another family visiting, and she introduced me as Stephen Boyd. Well, I didn't say anything, and the family knew Stephen Boyd. Only they hadn't seen him for 15 years. <laughs> now, I wasn't used to lying, okay? So they began to ask questions about Stephen Boyd, and because I knew Stephen Boyd, I answered questions about Stephen Boyd. <laughs> well, then they began to ask, it's not funny, Willard. It's one of my most embarrassing moments. Oh, this is tough. And then they began to ask questions about Stephen Boyd's father, and I didn't know Stephen Boyd's father, so I asked questions about my father. You just, oh, sure, you talked about your dad's Yeah, because I'm not used to lying, you know? And the, and the husband of this family went, well, that's not how I remember it, but it's been 15 years. I said, well, Dad will be here any minute, and I thought, I'm trapped. I said, excuse me, I've got to get out of here. And I, I said, goodbye. And I ran out of there and ran all the way home. Mrs. Rudolph, an educator, she thought, well, what strange behavior on behalf of Stephen, but certainly there's some logical explanation. And when Mr. Beauvais arrives, we'll get an explanation for what was going on with Stephen. So the knock on the door comes, and she opens the door, and lo and behold, it's Mr. Hawkins. It's not Mr. Stevens. Mr. Bo Mr. Beauvais. And she understands, and they all have a good laugh when my father calls me on the phone. Paul, come back here immediately. I'm going, Dad, can't you just explain it was all a mistake? I didn't mean to lie, but I didn't want to embarrass this mistake. Come back now. It took a lot longer to leave than it, to get back <laughs> yeah, than it did I to leave. Did, I'll I was going to say, that. getting there, uh, the eight blocks home was faster than the eight blocks back. When I got there, they were still laughing. I was so embarrassed, and my father made me face the he, he, he Bless your dad. Yeah. What was that? That was a lack of the fear of the Lord. Wow. See? It, Joseph wow. said to his brothers, do this for I fear God. Now, we know he did, because remember when, when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, yeah, he, and he ran from her? He ran. That was called the fear of God. Now, but there was a time when Elijah ran yeah, and from a woman, and but, that, that wasn't the fear of God. No. That was the fear of woman. Because he lost his ministry over that. And he had to commission Elisha. He lost his authority, didn't That's he? That's right. And you see, there are times when, when people are in the fear of God and when they're not. Does it just leak out? Wow. Well, I think we need to ask and receive by faith wow. on a regular, consistent basis for the fear of the Lord. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to do your homework for you, okay? I'm not going to tell you where all these verses are. I'm just going to read where some of the promises are, okay. and you've got to find them for yourself <laughs> okay. if you, so you can okay. claim them, okay? So the, okay? For those who fear God, God long promises to prolong our days. He promises riches, honor, and life. He promises healing and refreshment. He promises protection. He promises guidance and instruction. He promises mercy and compassion. He promises our needs will be met. He says we'll be kept alive in famine. He promises food. He promises sleep. He promises to fulfill our desires. He says he'll delight in us. Well, and Ecclesiastes says, when, everyth when everything's finished, when all is done, fear God and keep his commandments. That's the conclusion of everything.
Fear God and keep His commandments. So, we're talking about the fear, fear of the Lord. Lord. It is the way of God. God loves us so much, He doesn't want us to get into destructive, habitual sin. He wants to set us free. The fear of God is one of His ways to, to enable us to keep us from it because we become more concerned with what He thinks and feels than what we think in our own feelings. You see, you see we're, we're trying to solve the sin problem in a different way yeah. without having a fear of God. Yeah. And it just doesn't work. I mean, right. like you, you've made such a good point of that today. Yeah. Well, it's worked in my life. And you know what? Not only that, but I came home from a trip one day when my boys were quite young. And Peggy picked me up at the airport and she said to me, this is the list of the things you have to deal with when we get home. Oh, I thought, it shouldn't be like this. I mean, I'm out serving God. I shouldn't come home with a list of problems. So we had our family reunion, which was normal. I gave the gifts. I always brought the boys. And then the next day, I said, all right, God, lay it on me. Where's the problem? Came his laser light of conviction to my heart immediately. Hawkins, there's no fear of God in your family. <sighs> now, I know what the Scripture says. Fear God and teach your children. It never occurred to me to teach my boys what the fear of God was. I've been teaching all over the world the fear of God, but never taught my boys. And I repented. I asked his forgiveness. So I sat the boys down and I said, now, boys, do you know what the fear of God is? Well, of course I didn't. I hadn't taught them. I said, it's, it's to hate sin. It's to be more impressed with what God thinks than what you think it feels. To so look at God and go, that's what it means. Now, I wasn't going to strike terror to their hearts. They have a healthy concept of the character of God. I've taught them the character of God. I hadn't failed on that part. So I said, boys, come here. I'm going to pray the fear of God down on you. I said, the fact of the matter is we don't hate dis the sin of disobedience in our family. We don't hate the sin of murmuring and complaining, especially over food. And we don't hate the sin of not telling the truth. Now you know where the problems were. So I said, come here. Put my hands on their head and I prayed down the fear of God. I don't know if they felt anything. Boy, I sure did. Okay. Every day for a week. Well, then it's time to take a trip again, a couple of weeks ministry trip. So I take the boys out for ice cream the night before I leave. And I said, boys, what do I expect while I'm gone? He said, oh, that we, that we obey mommy, of course. Well, they hadn't done it. I said, wonderful. I want you to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, while daddy's gone, I promise to obey you and if I don't, to obey, obey mommy. And if I don't do it, I want you to discipline me. And the oldest son who was 12 goes, uh-uh, no way. <laughs> and I got encouraged. Why? Because that is the fear of God. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He wouldn't do it to get me off his back because he knew if he did it, God would hold him to it. And that's the fear of the Lord. Yeah. So I showed him the air of his ways. He did it, and the little one said, me too. Came home two weeks later. My wife met me at the airport. Not one negative report. I mean, this works. Every day praying it down for the couple weeks Thank I'm you, home. Jesus. Take him out for ice cream the night before I leave. Boys, what do I expect while I'm gone? That we obey mommy, of course. Very good. Pray the prayer. So they prayed the prayer. Came home without one negative report. Now, I'd like to report 100% wow. success, but of course I can't. But then neither can you anything you've tried. No, either. I know, no, I know. But, but you, I could tell you more stories how we were growing in our family in the fear of the Lord. I saw the progression taking place once I started to teach them the fear of the Lord. And I had failed as a father. I hadn't even occurred to me to obey the biblical injunction to learn to fear God and teach my children. And see, what we actually do is we teach them not to fear God. See, the fear of God acts like a sieve over your mouth. For example, did you ever preach at a meeting and somebody said, how are you there? And you said, oh, somewhere between two and 300 when you knew it was 203. <laughs> but between two and 300 is strictly speaking the truth, but it's stretching it evangelistically, you know, because it sounds a little better. You know how, you know, what does it say in Proverbs? Somebody complains it's about true. how expensive something is until they buy it, and then they go away and brag about brag it. Brag about what the good price they got on yeah. it. Yeah, I know. You know, and so we, we stretch the truth, but the fear of God acts like a sieve over our mouths that 100% truth might come forth from our lips. It's the, it's the answer to sin in the area of relationships. Joseph was a man who feared God, and it says he ran from Potiphar's wife. But for us today, it's not just the fear of God. It's also being able to receive the Father's comfort as well. Now, what happens is, why not take us back to Hawaii and back to Minneapolis? When you make a decision that you're going to fear God, God will allow you to be tested. 
How spiritual do you really want to be? How close and intimate friendship do you really want to have to him? Because remember, light and darkness cannot fellowship. When the light comes, and God's the light, John says, when the light comes, the darkness has to leave. And the fear of God is one of the secrets for us to keep us lit walking in the light because we become more concerned with what God thinks and feels than what anybody else thinks and feels. The fear of the Lord. It is the way of God. Whoa. But the scriptures are full of it. Now remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, it says, it talks about perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Mm -hmm. Holiness is choosing what's right out of what you know. Then you're holy. God is absolutely holy because he has perfect knowledge. Right, so he knows everything right. So he's he, always making so he, the right choice. He always chooses what's right, right out of perfect knowledge, so he's absolutely holy. Let's suppose that 20 years ago, you and I were really good friends, and when I walked into the studio, I said, Hey, Willard, and I reach out to embrace you, but when I do, I accidentally knock your glasses off and break them. Did I sin? No. No, didn't mean to do that. But what if the last time I saw you made me really angry? Oh, hello there, Will. Oh, knock your glasses off and break them. Did I sin? Yes. Same action, same result. What's the difference? <laughs> Motive, Motive of intention heart. of the your, heart. Yeah, heart. In the first instance, I had my hand in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I got the wrong results. But I didn't mean to do it. So when God says, be holy as I am holy, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, it's not a perfection of action. It's a perfection of motivation. That's why the prayer we want to learn to pray is, God, show me my heart okay. as you see it. Okay, okay. Then we're going to grow in holiness. But we perfect holiness, it says, in the fear of God. So the starting point is the fear of the Lord. That beginning to hate the sin. Do you go around doing the things you hate? No. no Not I mean, unless they're responsibilities, but I mean, right. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you hate taking out the garbage, yeah, you do it. But yeah. anyway, no. Because it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility. But I'm talking about those things that aren't responsibilities that you don't like. No, no. You, you won't do the things no. you hate. No. no. Well, but when we, if we sin, the fact of the matter is we love it. We don't hate it. Now, we can pray the fear of God into our nation. And see, depending on their family background, depending on the nation you're from, then there'd be varying degrees of the fear of God in, in different people's lives. Christian children growing up in strong Christian families would tend to have a greater measure of the fear of God than those who don't. That's one of the reasons why they come to the knowledge of the truth and are accountable at a younger age, mm -hmm. because there's a greater measure of the fear of God. Uh, in Scandinavia, for example, Denmark has never had revival, really. It always died before it got there. Real lack of the fear of the Lord. Sweden's a land of contrast, extreme uh, yeah. righteousness in the other end. Yeah. Norway still has a measure of the fear of God on it as a nation. Wow. It's decreasing, but it still is there as a nation. In my country, in the United States, it's a rapid decline in the fear of God. You know? And here in Canada, it's the same as well. So, we need to grow in a knowledge of the fear of the Lord. So, so as a church, I mean, we, you, you know, you said we could pray for this for the country. Yeah. But really, it's, it starts as, a, as an individual, sure. then, then the family, then the church. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it, as, the, as the church goes, as the leaders of the church go, so goes the church. As the church goes, so, so goes, goes the, the nation. Country. Yeah. Now, if we have a high percentage of pastors who are addicted to porn on the in Internet, yeah, we know that there's, there's a lack of fear of the Lord. There's a real lack of the fear of the yes. Lord, isn't there? Um, I have a friend in an Asian nation who does pastor's conferences. It's a nation that's very high percentage of Christians. And he told me recently how shocked he was to discover how many pastors in his nation were visiting prostitutes. Well, what is that? That's a lack, lack of, of the fear, fear of the Lord. That's an Asian nation where for 5,000 years it was okay. They've only had 100 years of Christianity in this nation. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes a while for the mentality to get changed. Now, it's in the scriptures, but there's still a mentality. They'll justify it in some way. And we tend to do that. We find ways to justify right. what we do, don't right. we? I mean, we find, uh, you know, we, if, if, I mean, we'll excuse our sin. Yeah. Let's, let's face it. Yeah. That, so, so when you're battling this thing, when you're, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're praying in the fear of the God, when you're praying in about the way yeah. to walk this thing, you're going to realize you're gonna, you're, you're, you may be fighting history. You may be fighting some, some uh, in your own, I mean, you're, you're, when you're saying that you, if for, these, for this Asian nation, they're, they're fighting a tradition Yes. of the way people behave yeah. and so on. Right. So when you're fighting, that, you're, it's going to be a, a real, I mean, you may be really, there's a war that's going sure to go on. Sure, there's a war there. that's going on. I had to even clean up my dreams, Willard. I used to have dreams 
that were unclean. And I didn't choose those things, but I'd wake up and it would set me off with the wrong kinds of thoughts. So every night I would pray for my, 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 my mind. I would protect wow. my mind with the blood of Jesus, stand against the enemy and ask for the fear of God to be upon my dreams. And I cleaned up my dreams even. Okay, so, cause you, so you were just saying, look, I've got to be serious about every part of my right. life here. I mean, it's right. not, I can't get, I mean, because, it, you know, the thing is you can't be inconsistent. You want to say I want to be genuine right, right. from beginning to right. end on this thing. I wanted to walk in inti increasing intimate relationship with, with the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. light and darkness don't fellowship. So there was no place for this stuff. Now, I'm not telling you I had 100% success no, no, all the time. Yeah, no, no. But you're just saying here's the process. But here's that, the process. That, 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 that made a yeah, difference in right, my life. Right. It? And that's why I could say as, as a 63-year-old man now, in all the years we've had the, the Internet, I've never even been tempted to take a sneak yeah. peek. It's just not even been a temptation because I won a victory a long time ago, and I continued to build up my boundaries right. in that category in my life. Now, it's not too late for anyone to start no. today. I mean, you know, if, you start, if you're 63 and you've got some struggles, right. this is not a bad time to start. No. In other words, today is a good right. day to start right. this. Yeah. Confess to God, I do not hate the sin the way you do, you but do. I want to. Ask and receive by faith the fear of the Lord. And then go to the Scriptures and say, now start to teach me teach your fear from the Scriptures. Just like it says in Psalm 33, or Psalm 34, I think it is. And, and, and then you start to see the promises, and you go, wow, yeah. God, I want this. Yeah. Well, 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 and this is where the promise says, you know, that the promise to comfort us is very real. I mean, this is because, because very often if we're trying to satisfy our own fleshly nature, yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. We're looking for comfort. We're, we're looking, looking for, for, comfort. for, for, for right. something. And, and, and right. I say, Lord, you know, yeah. I need to learn to receive your way in comfort. Not, that's right. not my way for no. comfort, right. but your way right. Right. to get the comfort that and I'm looking And remember, for. his ways are always right. Exactly. Well, yeah, I know the other one, you know, you go for comfort and you don't feel, you know, when you're all done, you no, feel it's crappy temporary. anyway. It's very temporary. That's yeah. right, right. Let me read a couple of scriptures. 2 Chronicles 6, 31. That they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which you give to our fathers. So you see, it's tying together the ways of God and the fear of the Lord. When you fear God, you're going to walk in his ways. Yeah. When you walk in your, his ways, you're going to fear him. Second Chronicles 6, 31. That they may fear thee to walk in their ways. Well, I just read that one. Job 4, 6. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Yeah. There, Job talks yeah. about it. And so, um, we wanna, we're going to walk in the ways of yeah. God, and one of them is this fear of God. Yeah. They're tied together and then yeah. specifically identified in many scriptures for us to learn. Well, you know what? Okay, my, uh, thanks, Paul. This is, thank you. You're welcome. No, I, I, I'm serious because uh, we all struggle. Yeah. I think there are areas, uh, I, well, maybe you're different than I am, but I just want to say that there are areas of my life where I do not fear the Lord the way I should. Yeah. Really. We, we're all, ha it's a process it's of a, growing and, and 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 you've helped me today because, you know, some are going to struggle one area, some are going to struggle another. But the point is, you know, and you can't gloat about the things you don't do. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not about that. There was no it's, victory there. There's no victory there. That, was, no. that wasn't your struggle. That wasn't no. your battle. But there are areas where you're battling. And today, uh, the Lord has really given us some understanding and some, really, the tools. And, and the aspect of confession, the aspect of recognizing where it is, acknowledging it. Number two, praying and ask the Lord. And by the way, God wants to actively be involved in your life. I think that's, that's the part. That we, it's not about saying, you know what, I just realize that I, I've got the strength here. It's saying God's involved in my life by his Holy Spirit. He'll work with me. And then he's given us his word to be a guide, to be a truth. And it's truth that we can fill our hearts and learn the ways of God. And I just really appreciate this. So thanks, Paul. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bring your fear, Lord, into Canada, we pray in increasing measure. In measures. Jesus' name, in increasing measure. Amen. Amen. I agree. My, starting with me, my home, and this nation. Amen. I'm sure you've appreciated the program with Paul Hawkins. I appreciate his love for the Lord, his clarity in what he communicates. And it's good. It's good. It encourages our spirit. We're concluding the program today, but I want to encourage you in your walk in the Lord. God is with you. You open your heart to him. Make yourself available to him. And the reality is, you know, the Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. He's, his position is already one of meeting us, talking to us, inputting into our lives if we open our heart towards him. That's, that's really one of the most uh, I, a common theme. That's one of the most common themes throughout the Bible is that those that approach God or made themselves available wanted 
to seek God, discovered him, found him, and found that he was more than what, just more precious, more wonderful than they could have imagined. We found him that way. I found him that way, and I'm sure you have as well. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten to know the Lord yet, just open your heart and invite him to be part of your life. I'd like to thank all of you that have made this program possible as well because it's the gifts that are sent to this ministry. When you invest in this ministry, you're touching lives across this country in a very direct way. Together, we're helping to reach them with good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. So thank you for sending a gift. If, you, if you've contemplated doing it and haven't done so yet, why don't you take time today to send a gift or call in and make a gift that way. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time on It's New Day.